What's going on everybody? In today's video we're going to be going over how to do knuckle sacks or knuckles as they're known in the des civil design world. This workflow I've come up with is a little bit outside of the box. I'm not sure if this tool was intended to be used this way, but we're going to go ahead and get going. And the concept behind this is typically when we have an intersection like this where there's a knuckle, you have two different street alignments that are coming in with two, two different street profiles. What ends up happening, as always, is one street will, let's say street A here, will get updated. And then you got to come through and since they're not dynamically linked in any way, then you have to make changes to street B here. Um, and then you got to make sure that uh, all the knuckle elevations get updated. The workflow I've come up with really keeps it dynamic and leaves us the ability to make changes on the fly and not have to really worry about anything in there messed up in these intersections. So let's go ahead and get into how I do it. The first thing we're going to need is a connected alignment. One thing about connected alignments that you really need to understand is they only work when the alignment and the profile are live in your drawing. They will not work when either the alignment is data referenced or the profile is data referenced. So keep that in mind. I had to learn this the hard way and I'm trying to make sure you don't have to learn that the hard way. So this alignment is live in this drawing. So is this one. So let's go ahead and create our connected alignment. I'm going to come up to the home tab, go to alignments. I'm going to create a connected alignment. The important thing to remember with connected alignments is that you have to select the alignments in the order you want the connected alignment to go in. In this case, I want this to be my zero station. I want it to flow around to street A. So I'm going to go ahead and select street B's alignment first. Then I'm going to select alignment A. And now it's asking me where I want these to be connected on. So I want them to be connected in this area. I'm going to go ahead and accept that location. And I'm just going to give this a name of street A to street B knuckle. And we will leave all this the same, but we have to come here to parameters. Now, what I want this to do is be a circular fillet. I know that my radius needs to be 32 feet. I do not want offsets. So I'm going to set these to zero. I'm going to go ahead and preview it to make sure. And you can see these arrows are showing what direction the alignment is going to go in. And that's the same direction that I selected the alignments in. Next, I'm going to come to connected profile. And this is the profile it's going to create that is going to keep these two profiles dynamically linked. I do not want a cross slope on those because I want them to be whatever the elevation is. I can go ahead and put a vertical curve in here if I want. Um, for now, I'm just going to leave it blank and I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. So now it's connected, created this connected alignment and we can see my zero stations here where I wanted it and one is over there where I wanted it. So now let's go ahead and add this to our corridor. So I'm going to go ahead and select my corridor. I do a lot of my corridor edits up here in the ribbon tab. I'm just going to go ahead and add a baseline. And I'm going to hit the green selection box and I'm going to grab my connected alignment. And when I hit OK, it's also going to bring in and grab that profile that's associated with that dynamic or connected alignment. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And now I'm going to go ahead and add a region to that baseline I just created. And we're going to go ahead and go from the end point here. And we're going to swing around to the end point there. Now I already have a uh, knuckle assembly created, which I'll show you in a second. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK, and we do not want to add any targets to it yet. And we will see here is our knuckle. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and create a corridor surface from this so we can kind of see what's going on. I'm going to do this very quickly. 
and we're going to use one in five contours and we're going to do our top let's go ahead and rebuild it and then just to show what's going on I'm going to go ahead and change the interval of these contours from one in five to uh, let's do 0.25 I know that's really a weird number but We'll just go with it for now, just so we can see a lot more of the contours and what's going on. So now let's go ahead and I'm going to create a split view. Do uh, two verticals. That way we can see down here what's going on. And on this view, I'm going to go ahead and scroll out to our knuckles. So I'm going to go ahead and actually get rid of this piece here because this is our knuckle assembly and then I'm going to go ahead and rebuild that corridor over there so now we see that there's this outside lane which is this outside lane and we want it to come out and set uh, what we're going to use as a feature line out there so I'm just going to draw a regular polyline it doesn't matter which direction you draw this in I'm going to draw this real quick And now we're going to set that as a target for this outside lane. So I'm going to go ahead and select the corridor. I'm going to edit my targets for this region. And it's going to be this left outside outer. And we're going to set the width target. And we're going to go ahead and pick this polyline. And now when we hit apply, we hit OK. Now let's go ahead and change this uh, frequency to to really get an idea of what's happening. Uh, let's change the tangents to five. And I know this isn't typical, but I'm going to set that to one just because it's going to show a lot more detail. And you see my contour is really cleaned up. So now what's going to happen, and I'll show uh, over here. Let's go ahead and do a profile view of that connected alignment. And I'll go ahead and put it uh, up here by street A. So we can see that when we start, when we would grab the connected alignment, anything outside of this diamond to the left, you cannot edit. That is dynamically linked to street B. On this side, this diamond forward is connected to alignment A's profile. But everything in between, we can actually edit. So the way this works, I'm just going to show, I'm going to grab this profile down here. And you can see that when I move it, this profile up here moved. So what that tells me is that as I make changes to my streets, like I was saying before, it's also going to make changes, and you can see them happening in the background to my surface and my corridor over here on the left side. So now let's go ahead and add this curb in. And the way I'm going to add the curb in is I'm going to go ahead and select the corridor. I'm going to go ahead and extract that feature line. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck all of them. The only one I want is the edge of travel way. One thing I want to go check is make sure that I am dynamically linked to the corridor and let's go ahead and give it a name. And now we're going to extract that feature line. So now we have a feature line right there, this yellow line. Now one thing to keep in mind is that feature line is actually stationed off of our connected alignment. So it's going to go in the same direction. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a separate corridor because you can't have a corridor that has the same um, dynamically updated feature line inside of itself. You'll create a circular reference. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do this corridor off of a feature line. I hit my green selection box. Let's go ahead and grab that auto feature line. 
And the assembly we're going to use is uh, return left. We're, we uh, can go ahead and set a baseline if we want. I'm not going to set it because we're going to do the whole thing. And so now what we see is we have our uh, curb and our right away that's now here. So what I want to do is I could go ahead and add this surface, create a surface from this and add it to my street surface. What I have found is that actually creates some errors. So the best thing to do is again, we, is we want this thing to be as dynamic as possible, but also as accurate as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select this other corridor. I'm going to go ahead and extract the feature lines from this guy. And again, we're going to want to make sure that they're dynamically linked. And we do not need the center because then we would have a feature line on top of itself. So this flange point is actually the, the edge of pavement. So I'm going to go ahead and extract those three. And then we're also going to go ahead and extract this right away line out here, this P2. So let's go ahead and extract that. And then now what we're going to do is we're just going to grab those feature lines that were created by the corridor. And we're just going to add them to the surface. So what this does is it creates um, a lot less confusion on the surface. And now we're going to go ahead and add those to our street surface. And I'm going to call this street A to street B knuckle. And I'm going to set my mid ordinance to like 0.1. And there we go. So now we see that our, our contours are doing exactly what we want them to do. So now let's come over here and see how this thing stays dynamic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and move this, Street A, and I'm just going to be a little bit uh, dramatic with it. I'm going to move it way up here, and we'll see that this has changed. And you can see that our corridor has already updated itself. So we see that these spikes are happening on our surface, but now if we rebuild that corridor, and now when we rebuild this outside corridor, it's all clean. And just to really show it, I'm gonna go ahead and have these guys rebuild automatic, which I'm sure that most of the time we do not wanna do. And now I'm gonna go ahead and move this guy back down to where we started. And we'll see on the left side, both corridors were updated and my knuckle is staying dynamic. So now let's say we want to put a low point right here. This is a drainage easement. One of the real pro tips um, that are really hard to find out is one called a point. Now what we're going to do with a point, and this is just a regular AutoCAD point. So let's say we want our low point to be right there. So what we're gonna do is we wanna place that point on this connected alignment profile right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it and I'm gonna project the object to the profile view. And now when I go ahead and grab this point, a dialog box is gonna come up. I'm just gonna set this to uh, 605, which is at the bottom profile here. So now this point is that point over here and you can see when I grab it, uh, it highlights over here on the right side. See how they're highlighting? And the cool thing about these points and by adding them to profiles is I can move this guy and it's going to move over here on the right side. Pretty cool little trick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to force a low point right there and I'm just going to grab that connected profile. I'm going to go ahead and just add a PI right there. And so now we can see the profiles of our, or the corridors have already updated. There's my low point. So again, this is a, a really powerful tool. 
Um, I'm pretty sure I'm using some of these tools in a way that they weren't intended to be used, um, but it really works. I hope this helps you guys out. And again, if this information has been helpful to you guys, please feel free to help uh, the channel grow. Like, subscribe, and share. And until next time, see you guys later.